Okay, so now we are ready to set up the logic for the UI screen in our UI system, now that we have the UI system ready to go. And this will allow us to turn on those lines of code that we commented out in the UI system. All right, so let's get moving and switch over to Unity. Okay, so let's pop open that UI screen script here. Perfect. Okay, so the first things that I want to set up, so every screen Okay, and you're just going to have to take my word for this. Every screen that in our system needs to have a couple of required components. So the first one is going to be an animator, all right? Because I want to have animation on my particular UI screen. And this is to make it so like UI elements fly in and out, or maybe they just fade up and down, those kinds of things. So we are going to set up an animator, a base animator for all screens uh, in a later lecture here. All right, so then the next thing I want to do is say require component uh, type of canvas group. So the canvas group allows us to control the, the transparency of any UI element that is actually below this particular screen. So it's super useful, and that's why I always attach a canvas group to every UI screen that I have in my UI systems. All right, so uh, with that, that means that we need to actually um, capture... So I'm going to create another private variable. We need to capture that animator, all right, so, or store it as a reference. So I'm just going to create another variable, a private variable. And that also means that in the start method, I want to get that. So I want to say animator.getComponent animator, or type of animator there. Perfect. All right, so that'll store it. And because we've put this required component up there, um, we can be insur insured that we will have that component on it. Okay, so uh, the, the next thing I want to do is I want to be able to set a selectable. All right, so if you're not familiar with what a selectable is, any UI element here inside of Unity. So let's take a look at the button down here, okay, this register button. You'll notice that we have this button script. All right, so this button script actually inherits from what is called a selectable. All right, so what this does by us including a start selectable we can automatically highlight a button when a screen starts so you see that a lot in games um, and in apps as well like when it, when you go to the start screen like the, the play button is automatically highlighted or it's automatically doing its animation you know saying hey click me kind of thing that's what this is going to do so what we're going to do is we're going to say I'm going to create another header for main properties just to make things clean inside of my inspector okay and we'll say uh, public uh, selectable, but in order to actually do that, we need to include the UI namespace. So that we're going to say using UnityEngine.UI. Okay, and so now we can say public selectable. All right, and we're going to call this M Start Selectable. And I put the M underscore in there because that's hung, the Hungun, Hungarian, excuse me, <laughs> Hungarian notation, and it stands for member. So whenever I search for variables or properties of this particular class, I can just type in M really quick, and I can see everything right away in the IntelliSense. So it makes it a lot easier to find stuff. All right, so now I want a couple of events on this as well. So I'm going to say using Unity engine.events and this allows me to put the events just like we did for the UI system there and I can say these are the screen events <coughs> and we'll say public unity event on screen start so anytime the screen starts oops let's fire an event because we might want to fire off some other stuff we, we might want to have an audio cue play or maybe a particle system like I was saying before so and then we're gonna say on screen close okay equals a new unity event just so we are we can actually communicate with other scripts without having to create more and more code we could just use these events to communicate with other objects and you'll you'll find after using events there or, or at least unity events more and more you'll find how much how powerful they are and how it makes your code reusable and a lot easier to, to understand and manage, really. So that's why I like to use them. Alrighty, so now 
again, for screens, we don't need the update method either. But what we want to do in the on start is we want to say if we do have a start selectable, okay, we need to set the event system to, or we need to tell the event system, hey, we have this selectable, so highlight it. And in order to do that, what we need to do is include the Unity Engine Systems namespace as well. And what this will do is it'll allow us to access the event system dot current. Oops. All right, and that is literally this object right here. That is literally that guy. Okay, so if you have that in your scene, this event system dot current will return an, a reference to that particular object. So we'll say event system dot current dot set selected game object to our m start selectable dot game object. Now what'll happen is it'll trigger that particular selectable, that button or whatever, right? It'll trigger it and tell it to highlight itself, right? So if I were to select this button, what it'll do is it'll set it to the highlighted color, or if you have it set to sprite swap, it'll set it to the highlighted sprite or animation, and it'll set it to the highlight animation. All right, so super useful to include that in your screens. Okay, so we're starting to build this, this puppy up over here. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is put in our two helper methods. So we're going to say public void. And I'm going to make these guys virtual because we are going to extend these later on because we're going to get all fancy and stuff. We're going to say start screen. <clears throat> and then we're going to say public virtual void close screen. All right, so we're going to start a screen and close a screen. So the first thing that we can do, that we know we can do, is, is fire off our events. So we're going to say if on screen start does not equal null, if we have lis listeners in this, this event, meaning objects waiting for this event to happen, we're going to say on screen start dot invoke. Perfect. And we're going to do the same thing for the close. So we're going to say if on screen close does not equal null. We're going to say on screen close dot invoke. Boom. OK. So with that, we actually have most of our screen set up. The last thing that I really want to do is fire off or trigger a very specific trigger property on an animator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, if we have that animator, if animator, OK? So if we have that particular object, we're going to say animator dot set trigger. Oops, we want trigger set a target. And we're going to say show. OK, and then for the close screen, we can say hide. And you'll see, once we get to the animation portion of this course, how useful that is. Now, one thing to note, we could actually make that even smaller, so we could refactor that a little bit. We can say void handle animator. OK. We could pass in a string called a trigger. And instead of typing this out twice, like all these lines, OK, these four lines like that, right? Instead of typing that out twice, we can just say a trigger. All right. So now I can get rid of these guys, like so. OK, we can say handle animator show, like that. And then down here, same thing, right? Much easier, same code. Now you don't, basically, we don't have two opportunities where the script could fail, we just have the one, right? So if there's an error here, it'll happen here and not, and not in two places. Cool? All right, so I'm going to close out this video here. And in the next video, we are going to start to get our fader set up, all right? Because we want to be able to also have the ability to fade between both these screens automatically, OK? So let's get going. Thanks so much.